Good evening. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. We're so grateful for you being here, connecting with us on tonight for our Wednesday night recharge. We welcome you into the sacred place that we call sanctuary. That when God is exalted, the devil is defeated and we have victory. Amen. We want to tell you that God is still on the throne. Even in the midst of all the chaos that we have going on in the world, sometimes we have to sit back and just say, God, we just need you to fix it. How many of you have that just testimony and say, Lord, just fix it. Fix it for us right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your continued prayers. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your encouraging word. We are all in this together. Amen. So I want you to know that tonight is Wednesday night, and we're here in this sanctuary, and I need you. I need you to do a couple of things for me. I need you to hit the like button. I need you to hit the share button. I need you to hit those hearts uh, as much as possible, those thumbs up hearts. I want you to comment on uh, the call and response and be a part of our Bible study on Tonight, tonight I have a bit that I want to unpack, so I want to get right into the Word of God. Pray for me, and I pray for you. I want you to know that I'm constantly, we're constantly praying over your prayer request, that we're in agreement with you, that God will give you the desires of your heart. We're in Galatians tonight, Galatians familiar passage of scripture I want to um, get into this on tonight because somebody needs this word on this evening there is a word from the Lord for the people of God for such a time as this Galatians chapter 6 verses um, 7 through 10 do not be deceived God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing well in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And I want to talk about tonight that delay is not denial. Delay is not denial. Let us not be weary in well doing. And I want to know how, how many of you, how many of you connected tonight, how many of you are willing to admit that you are impatient? That you are impatient. Why does it seem so difficult, so hard for us to wait? And our problem in, in most cases with getting tired or becoming weary is that we are not seeing results from what we believe is sowing good seed. And it's hard, and I understand it is disheartening, it's discouraging sometimes at harvest when we either see no harvest or the harvest that we receive is disappointing. Have you ever noticed that much of life is about waiting? We wait 
in lines to, to make a purchase, to get our fast food, which seems more like slow food sometimes. We wait. We wait to get married. We wait uh, to raise our children. We wait for the increase. We wait to buy a house or to buy a car. We wait to have a baby. And then we wait for them to grow up and to leave the nest. We wait at the doctor's office. We wait in traffic. We make a phone call and we wait on hold. We email or text and wait for a response. We schedule a vacation and wait for it to get here. We wait for God to answer our prayers, show us our destiny, reveal his presence, and perform our miracle. We wait. Much of life is about waiting. I want you to type that in the comments, and I want you to end that with the shrug emoji. Much of life is about waiting. And sometimes it seems like all we do is wait. Maybe, just maybe, you're still waiting for God to perform a miracle. You've waited in the past, you've waited in the present, and you will wait in the future. Waiting is a part of life. It always has been, it always will be. But however, God promises that we won't have to wait forever. Because Galatians 6 and 9 tells us, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And I want you to type that in the comment. Don't faint. Come on, I'm talking to you right now. Don't faint. Don't lose hope. Don't give up, because in due season you will reap if we faint not. Come on, type that in the comment. Don't faint. Notice that the Apostle Paul tells us not to grow weary in our well-doing. In other words, we, we should never give up. But we are to continue to do good. We are to continue to pray. Don't stop praying. We got to continue to worship our God. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise. We got to continue to believe and we got to continue to wait for the miracle that is on the way. Oh, glory be to God. I'm talking to you. There's something on the way for you. If we can just hold out just a little while longer, delay is not denial. And too many times we want to stop. But it is our faithfulness that God is able to bless us. You got to stay faithful to God. As long as you stay faithful to him, he'll be faithful to you. Just think about it. What if? What if you had given up? What does that get you? Probably nothing. And the only sure way to fail is to give up. We can't give up. But your due season, yes, Lord, your due season will come if you don't give up. There is a due season where you will reap what you have sown. This is Bible study. So in Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8, it tells us that there is a due season for everything. There is a time for everything and a season 
for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to let it go. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak up. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Everything in all of life has a specific time and a season. And I want you to understand that the word do, D-U-E, do means something that rightfully belongs to you or something that is old or something that is expected to happen do. And the word season means a special period of time characterized by a particular circumstance or feature. So if you put these definitions together, a due season is a special period of time or an appointed time when we receive that which we have expected, that which is owed us or rightfully belongs to us. So we got to remember Galatians 6 says that in due season, I want to build up your faith. Faith coming by hearing. In due season, we will reap. Well, in order to reap, we must first have sown seed. And you must have a sowing season before you have a reaping season. Galatians 6 and 7 says, don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So just what does due season mean? In the Amplified Bible, it means in due time, at the appointed season. The New Living Translation says, at just the right time. I like that. And you're only fooling yourself if you think that you can reap without sowing. Your due season is about reaping what you have sown. For an example, a farmer plants a seed in the ground. He expects in due season to receive what he planted. If he planted corn, he's going to get corn. If he planted apple seeds, he's going to get apples. And the seed of faith, I'm talking to you right now. The seed of faith that you planted, that you prayed for, that you believed God for and waited for, you will reap, yes, Lord, what you have sown. That dream that you prayed about, the one that God gave you, that you spent countless hours working on, that you have invested your life and finances into, those seeds will produce. That dream will come true. I'm talking to the dreamers. You will reap what you have sown. That person that hurt you, the one that you forgave. Yeah, we talked about it last week. You just made a deposit of forgiveness in your heavenly bank account. And someone is going to show you the same forgiveness that you have given out. You will reap what you sow. Hmm. You will have what is owed you and what is rightfully yours. Thank you, Jesus. 
in due season as long as you're asking according to God's will. It's coming. It's coming. I'm talking to you. It's coming your way. Delay is not denial. God has not forgotten about you. Think about Moses. Moses was 80 years old when God called him to deliver Israel. This is Bible study. He waited 80 long years for God's time because God could have made David, I'm talking about something else, he could have made David king in the moment he was anointed. But instead, David had to wait 20 years to be made king over Israel. God could have freed Joseph from prison just as soon as he was in prison. But instead, he waited at least two years before he was set free. God could have given Abraham the son he promised him when he was still young. But instead, he made him wait until he was 100 years old. Jesus could have healed Lazarus when he was still alive. But instead, he waited four days after to raise him from the dead. Moses waited 80 years for his destiny. David waited 20 years to be king. Joseph was in prison for at least two years. Abraham was childless for 100 years. Lazarus was dead for four days. God could have answered those prayers much quicker, but he didn't. He made them wait instead. And he often makes us wait too. You are not alone in your waiting season. So much of life is spent waiting. Yet many of us still haven't figured out how to wait. Psalms 37 and 7 tells us how to wait. Be still and wait patiently for the Lord. And the Hebrew word wait in that particular scripture means to writhe in pain. It's translated in the King James Version to bear, to bring forth, to fail grievously. Hope, sorrowful, to travel, to be wounded. And it is obvious from this definition that waiting, hear this, waiting isn't much fun. Waiting is not fun. But this definition paints an interesting picture of waiting. And I want to break this down for you into three parts. Waiting. First of all, it tells us that waiting can be painful. Waiting can be sorrowful. Waiting can be grief. And sometimes the pain is so intense, we feel like we can't take it. Maybe we feel wounded by it, like when we're waiting for a child to be born. We're waiting for the relationship to be restored. We're waiting for a loved one to be healed. We're waiting for God's promise over your life to be fulfilled. And all the while you're waiting for that, waiting hurts. But the second thing I want to tell you is that waiting means to hope. That means that in our pain and grief, we wait without losing hope. We hear and we bear the pain. We bear that pain and sorrow, but we refuse to lose hope. Habakkuk 2 and 3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Glory be to God. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And I'm talking to somebody right now who's been waiting for something is surely coming your way. And I want you to type that in the comments right now. I refuse to lose hope. 
Yes, Lord. Come on, put that in the comments. Come on, speak that over your own life. Speak that out loud. I refuse to lose hope. Yes, Lord. The third thing I want you to see is that if we stay in hope, we will experience the final part of waiting, which is to bring forth the awaited promise. Your promise is on the way. Waiting means to bring forth as in giving birth. Waiting gives birth to new life. It gives birth to the relationship. It restores us back to wholeness. The loved one is healed and the miracle is fulfilled. Yet, because we are humans, it seems hard for us to wait. And I know that many times you don't like to admit it, but yes, sometimes it's hard. It's hard to wait. And the world tells us that we shouldn't have to wait. Oh God, the, we're a high-speed internet, microwave, HOV lane, express lane driving, cash app society that doesn't want to wait. Like, why wait? Why wait to buy it when you can just charge it on a credit card? Why wait at the restaurant when you can just get fast food or Uber Eats or curbside delivery? Why wait? Why wait for marriage when you can just live together right now? But God's plan is very clear. His plan involves a waiting season. Psalms 27, verse number 14. Wait for the Lord. Be of good courage and take heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And you see, we there are reasons God makes us wait. And one of the reasons I want to tell you tonight, one of the reasons God makes us wait is because waiting reveals what's really in your heart. Waiting reveals what's really in your heart. Mary and Martha, they were good friends of Jesus. You know the story. However, when Jesus didn't show up on their time frame, Lord, that's what Mary, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Martha, in her statement, accuses Jesus of taking too long. And God rarely does things on our timeline. I'm sorry to tell you this, but he rarely does things on our timeline. And if we're not careful, we can end up accusing God of having been uncaring or letting us down. And we end up questioning God's timing. But God is never late. He's always on time. I need some help right through there. I said God is never late. He's always on time. Would you type that for me? God is never late. He's always on time. Somebody needs to know that. Somebody needs to be encouraged on tonight that God is never late. He's always on time. And he waits just long enough to show us what's in our hearts. Because if we truly trust God and believe his word and believe that he knows what's best for us and believe that his timing is perfect, then we won't accuse or question God when we have to wait. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. And may I suggest to somebody who's watching me tonight, if he's making you wait, then there is a good reason for it. If he's telling you no, then maybe, just maybe, he has something better for you. If he's not giving you victory today, maybe it's because you will have a greater testimony 
on tomorrow. Oh God, yes, Lord. Think about it. Think about the Apostle Paul. He was one of the most faith-filled people alive. He prayed three times to have the thorn in his flesh removed, but God did not remove it. Instead, he told him, my grace, thank you, Jesus, is sufficient. It's not always easy to understand why God doesn't do certain things the way that we think he should. The Bible records for us in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own authority. We might not like it, but it's not for us to know the times or the dates. Only God knows. But one thing for sure, God always has our best interest at heart. And his timing is perfect. I want you to say thank you, Jesus, right there. Thank you, Lord, for your perfect timing. And for those of you who are watching me, I'm telling you, I want you to know I'm not teaching about something I haven't experienced. I have waited for a lot of things. And yes, I'm still waiting on some things even now. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. But it is not for us to know the times or the season. But in our due season, we will have what we've been waiting on. Oh, glory. I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm telling you, in your due season, you will have what you have been waiting on. I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm waiting on you to agree with me. In your due season, you will have what you have been waiting on. But in the meantime, we will continue to trust God, to believe God, and to wait, to wait faithfully for what he has already promised. You see, we either got to understand that God is in control or he's not. But we believe he is. I said we believe he is. Do you believe it? We believe that God is still in control. So we're going to wait on him and we're going to trust that things are going to get better. Hallelujah. We're going to trust that his timing is perfect. Would you type that in the comments? God is in control. Do you believe that? God is in control. And here's the best part. As we wait on God, he is doing a work in us that can only be done as we wait on him. And that's a good thing. So as your pastor, I want you to ask you, I want you to know that. I want to know from you right now, will you wait? Will you wait with us? Will you believe with us? And will you trust God with us? I need you to put that hand up. I'm going to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait. Hallelujah. For what I've been praying for. Just because we're having to wait, it doesn't mean that we've missed God or that we did something wrong. And I just mentioned all of the saints that had to wait. Had to wait on God. Think about it. Think about what happened with Abraham and Sarah. They got tired of waiting. They got tired of waiting for the child that God had promised them. So they decided that Abraham would have a child with his servant, Hagar. It's Bible study. And the result was Ishmael. And, and the Bible said that Ishmael was a wild donkey of a man whose hands were against everyone and everyone's hand was against him. And this was not God's plan, but Abraham and Sarah became impatient and decided to do things their own way instead of patiently waiting on God. And you see, we pray. We pray. I know how we do it. We pray. We pray for patience, but then we don't want to wait. Be careful what you pray for. You pray for patience, 
but then you don't want to wait. And I got to be honest, I have to consistently, I have to constantly tell myself that God is going to answer my prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I got to keep telling myself. I'm talking about me now. I got to constantly tell myself that God is going to answer my prayer. Hebrews 10 and 36 says, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And I'm reminded of Daniel. Daniel's prayer was answered the day that he asked, but he had to wait. He waited three weeks for it to reach him. And just because God doesn't immediately show us the answer doesn't mean that he hasn't answered your prayer. In Daniel chapter 10, verse number 12, it says, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. And this is why we should never give up. Don't you dare do it. Don't you ever give up. In the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 18, verse number 1, Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them they should always pray and never give up. When should we pray? Always. When should we pray? Type it in the comments. Always. When should we pray? That's the question. Always. When should we give up? Never. We should never give up. And in Luke chapter 18, Jesus goes on to give that parable to say there was a judge that did not fear God or care about his people. And in that same town, there was a woman who kept coming to the judge for justice. And for some time, he refused to help her because he didn't really care. But eventually, oh God, but, but he eventually, because the Bible said that she wore him out. Oh God. And eventually, he saw that she got justice. So listen to that particular text. I'm in Luke chapter 18, verses 6 through 8. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? And I tell you, he will see that they get justice and get it quickly. And I want you to type that in the comments. God will answer my prayer. Glory be to God. Somebody needs to be empowered right through there. Delay is not denial. God will. He will answer my prayer. Come on, type that in the comments. God will. I know he will. God will answer my prayer. And the point is if we keep praying, God will honor our persistence. Keep on praying. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on giving him praise. And God will honor our persistence. Don't give up just because you don't see anything happening today. Sometimes God is moving even though we can't see it. Sometimes he is always doing something on our behalf. Something good is happening for you in the spiritual realm. God will not keep putting you off. Eventually, he will answer. Because delay is not denial. Come on, type that in the comments. God will answer because delay is not denial. I want to pray with you right now. Hallelujah. Father, 
in the name of Jesus. God, I'm coming to you as humbly as I know how to pray with your people. And I declare, I declare to God's people that you will have your due season in God's time. Your due season will come and not delay. You have prayed about it. You've fasted. You've cried out to God. You, you have believed God's word and declared his word over your life and over your circumstances. You've been without too much. You've been sick too long. Been discouraged for a while and defeated far too long. But in due time, you will have, thank you, Jesus, more than enough. Things have been rough. The waiting has been tough. But in due season, God will say, enough is enough. You will possess your blessings. Thank you, Jesus. I call in your blessings. Thank you, Jesus. From the north, the south, the east, and the west. I'm calling in your blessing. In due season, your blessing will overtake you. You will have peace and no one will make you afraid. God will look on you with favor and make you fruitful. Make room for the overflow. Make room for the overflow. Make room for the overflow. Your due season is coming. So conceive it, believe it, and receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Delay is not denial, my friend. God is saying enough is enough. And he's getting ready to give you what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man, but God has. so much for tuning in tonight. It is our prayer that something was said to encourage you, to uplift you, to make you feel like you can go on another day. Delay is not denial. I want you to know that I'm praying for you and I ask that you continue to pray for me. I want to invite you to tune in again on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And for those who have the privilege of coming in person, please be on time. Our prayer service starts before that time. If we go into our prayer before, we go on to our live stream. But there is, there is a way that seems like sweet. Hallelujah. God is the best way. For me, God is the best way for you. I want to remind you that this weekend, if the Lord delays his coming, we will spring forward, which means that technically we possibly could lose an hour of sleep. So be aware of those things and don't be late. May the Lord watch between me and me while we are yet absent one from another. Can I tell you, I miss you. I miss your face. I miss you. Your smile, I miss your laughter. But delay is not denied. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you for coming. I, I'm so elated that you're still staying connected to the word of God. Never one to him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask, think, dream, or even imagine, according to the power that worketh in us. And we know. That all things work together for the good of those who are called according to the purpose of his glory. And God, we thank you for what you have done in our lives. We thank you for what you're doing right now. And God, we're staying in expectation for what you're getting ready to do. For we know that delay 
is not denied. And until the next time, may the glory of the Lord be revealed in you. It is our humble prayer. Thank you, Jesus.